What is up my NeoVim friends? Today we're going to talk about my current NeoVim setup and what I'm using and some of the plugins that I'm using. Basically a giant overview informally of where I'm at in my configuration and some things that I've learned and maybe some pro tips along the way. This is kind of a weird time to do this video. Usually you have these come out in the early parts of the year, but I haven't done this in quite a long time. So I thought it'd be a good recap for where things are at and what I'm enjoying in NeoVim today. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Andrew and I do a lot of technical content, especially with NeoVim and the command line and terminals. So if you enjoy that, hit the subscribe button and let's talk about my NeoVim setup. All right, let's start high level. The terminal I'm using today is Kitty. And I use that because I really enjoy the Kitty graphics protocol and showing images within my terminal. Check out my video on showing images whenever you're using Obsidian. That is a really great way to see a lot of pictures within your terminal and not have to open the separate app to be able to see those. Really awesome. I also just got access to the Ghosty terminal. And so if we open that up, so you can see I have this running on my machine. I haven't played with it a whole lot. And so you can see some of the key binds and other commands. I'll make a dedicated video on this pretty soon, but I'm still configuring it. I've run into a couple of small issues that hopefully I can get resolved before I make that other video. Overall, I've been pretty happy with Kitty. It's very performant. It's a fast terminal and I really like the graphics. So rocking that for right now until I check out Ghosty. If you've been on the channel for a little while, you'll know that I use Tmux. So the top section there, which is where it shows like InVim and then the first tab and we can, you know, we could create a couple of new tabs here. This is all Tmux and I have all the configuration for Kitty to be able to do like a command T to create a new tab. Like in, in normal mode for Tmux, you'd have to do your prefix. For me, this is control A and then you would have to do something. So if I did control A and question mark, these are all the commands that I have right now, but I have some shorthands which are configured inside of Kitty Conf, which is really nice to be able to work without needing to do the prefix. Alongside Tmux, I use Sesh, which is Josh Medeski's new plugin that he's written in Go. So I enjoy this, I've been trying it out. It's a nice way to manage your different Tmux sessions and quickly resume them and jump into them. So, you know, if I'm working on some Go stuff, I can jump over and do this and work in the Go projects that I have. Or if I'm taking notes, I can go to my Obsidian Vault and jump over there and do all kinds of stuff. So it's nice to resume your sessions. And if you haven't checked out the plugin for resurrecting, like that was really awesome. As always, I will leave a link in the description about my personal config and where you can find this within GitHub. That way you can check it out and use it yourself or pull some nice ideas that you find interesting. The theme that I really enjoy using is Tokyo Night. So I've used that pretty consistently across the board for NeoVim and Tmux and for Kitty itself. That's the theme that I've been using. Uh, I was using Grovebox, but I really have liked the Tokyo Night stuff especially the one from Folky within NeoVim. The ability to work really well with other plugins is nice to me, so I've been using that. The one thing that I really haven't enjoyed with Tmux is I can't clear the screen very well. And so like, it, if you have some text like this, I have an alias TC that will clear and clear out the Tmux history and then do another clear. However, you can't run this whenever you have a long running like tail command. And so if I'm tailing something, then I can't clear it to continue running, I usually have to stop the command, clear the screen with that TC alias, and then resume the command. If anybody knows a way to actually clear or do like a command K like experience with Tmux, let me know in the comments. That's the only thing that I have found with Tmux that I don't personally like. All right, let's jump into my NeoVim config. And whenever we go here, we're presented with a nice dashboard. So I use dashboard in Vim and I have this custom logo to be able to see, you know, what I think is pretty cool with NeoVim and then all these shortcuts and then some of the lazy stuff that's built in. This is all cool. If we go to kind of the top level directory here. So I have an FT plugin, which has a couple of things specific to languages. So for Go, this has like some formatter stuff. And then for Java, if we go in here, this has some of the configuration with JDTLS, which is a whole slog of configuration. I'm um, still working on fixing some issues with some of the Java stuff, so I have not forgotten. Stay tuned for more videos on that once I get it working. If we go back up here, you can see that there's some top level stuff in it. Lua, this has some of the lazy InVim configuration, which is what I've used as my package manager for quite a long time. I really love it. And so I have this configured at the very top level. I also tried to 
you know, move this map leader to a different location and this is where it just has to live. So this is where it is. Some overall requires using some of the typical Lua syntax that we require a file. And then if we go back over to our Lua directory, this is how I have my plugins organized right now. So I have this plugins.lua, which is where most of the plugins are, unless I've split them out specifically to their own table. And so if you haven't watched my video of restructuring my lazy Vim configuration, check it out in the top right. And I go into a little bit more detail on moving this and some of the documentation from lazy invim. If we go into here, then each of these returns a specific table and basically lazy will combine all this and smash it all together to be able to run in your configurations, which is really nice. If I have a configuration that's more involved, then I usually split it out here into the plugins. Otherwise I just leave it in here in the plugins .lua file. And this is again, just a giant table that has all kinds of different stuff. So we'll walk through this and walk through some of the plugins that are in this and also in that plugins directory. And I'll give you an idea of what things are really beneficial and useful. I have a lot of plugins in here. I constantly debate whether I truly need them all or whether I'm just experimenting with them, which I would encourage anybody to also do like, you know, go through your plugins every once in a while, see if you actually use them or if you can get rid of them, save you a little bit of you know, headache whenever you have to upgrade or maintain them. A lot of the things that I have are really helpful. Some are just some visual niceties that are good to have around, but are not quite necessary for my daily workflow. All right, let's start with the individual files and kind of run through at a high level some of these. I won't go into depth. I've covered these in other videos, but generally I'll give an overview and what I've found useful and how I've configured these. So the first one is Codium. And so this is one of the AI tools I've been using recently. If you start typing in something, like if we did another return, we should see some autocomplete here and then we can control G to autocomplete it. This is really useful for, I'm learning some Golang. It's been really, really useful to understand some of the patterns there and be able to see different alternatives. This is less useful inside of a markdown file because it just generates garbage that I have to clear out. So I have it disabled for markdown files for my notes. I also haven't found it as useful in whenever I'm tweaking my new them config, but I've left it on to kind of continue to experiment with it. I've been really happy with Codium. It's a free tool. If you don't have a tool that you're integrated with or that you're using for your autocomplete, check this one out. I know that there's an issue with Super Maven, which is another one people use where it's reading all of your open buffers in new them, which seems kind of nefarious to me. So if you want a tool to check out, I would recommend Codium to get started and have a smart AI assist for your autocomplete. All right, next up we have GP Lua. And so this one, I also made a video about in the same AI tools that I'll link in the top right. This one, you can have a conversation. So if you crack this open with GP chat new, then this will open up a new buffer and you can ask it all kinds of stuff. And then you can change the agent in the top right. If we wanted to change the GP agent, then we could say next agent and it'll swap over to a bunch of different options. The one that I really like to use is this one right here with Olama and Llama 3.1. And this is running on my local machine. So it's not connecting to any cloud provider to be able to send that information. So if you want to keep information local to your machine, this is a really nice option. It's a little slower. So keep that in mind if you're running an LLM locally and you don't have a decent GPU like I I don't have a decent GPU on this uh, Mac M3, but it works okay. Like it, I can get by and have it work. I'll probably switch to using like Gemini or something else to get a little bit more speed if I don't care that it's being sent to some large LLM that's learning about it. The nice thing about this one is you can ask something like, um, is this, uh, let's see, why is the sky blue? And if we do control G a couple times, we'll let this auto complete. I'm going to fast forward while it auto completes. All right, we've now seen this complete its message. It took a little bit of time. Uh, maybe another reason why I'm probably going to switch to using Gemini or some other thing because this just takes too long on the machine, but it is a nice option in case I need it. Harpoon is pretty standard configuration. Basically, I have custom key bindings for each of the different files that I have marked. So if I hit control E, then I have this file in my harpoon menu and I can go to it. Pretty standard harpoon stuff. So nothing crazy here. 
The next one I wanna cover is the LSP. And so I'm still using LSP zero, and this is probably overkill for my config, but you know, once you have a working LSP, it's hard to change that and do something different. So I have a lot of the normal things using Mason to configure it all. And then your standard key maps that are gonna do the different signature help or do the code actions or rename. All this is pretty standard. Go to definition is by far the thing that I use the most. And then Mason, again, to con configure all the different LSPs. I have a lot of them. I've been working in a lot of different languages, so could probably cut some of this out once I zero in on the languages that I use the most. Pretty standard for snippets. So the snippets that I have configured are from VS Code. So I have those set up here. And then this, if you haven't seen my video about the most requested stuff, uh, basically, whenever you have this command line, which is from nice.invim, then you can get some nice autocomplete uh, using this, this plugin right here, which is CMP command line. And then you can do this setup here to be able to get you a lot of nice things. So inside of the buffer, whenever you're searching, you can get uh, like CMP and a lot of these things autocomplete. Really nice stuff. Watch the video in the top right and it'll show you how to configure this. You've probably noticed that I use which key. So if I hit space, which is my leader key, then I get a whole lot of helpful hints to be able to see what I have options for. So you can see the harpoon. So if I hit A, then it'll mark the file and we'll see that show up in our harpoon list here. Basically for any key maps that I want to add in here, if you do this description, whenever you're doing some key map adding, then that will show up inside of which key. Super helpful for remembering all the different key maps, especially when you have too many plugins like I do. All right, the next one that I wanna talk about just quickly is NeoClip. This one's a nice clipboard buffer. And so it has some, this is basically the default configuration. If I hit leader O, then you can see some of the things that I've deleted or copied. Really useful for whenever you're yanking and you wanna save something or you overwrite it by accident. This is your saving grace. Quickly hit that, and then you can quickly get the text that you needed to have in your buffer, but it's no longer available. Next one we'll talk about is, uh, we can quickly cover InVim UFO. So this one lets you do folds. And so if you hit ZA, then this will do a fold, and it does an intelligent fold, so that whenever you're, you know, you have your LSP, which is down here, this guy will know to use the LSP or just your basic indent. And so, you know, if I want to collapse certain things um, and do it differently, I could do a ZM, I believe, and it collapses everything. ZA will do an incremental expand. This is super helpful and nice. So if you want to be able to collapse like you would in some other editor, InVim UFO is the tool for you. All right, the next one that we want to cover if you have seen my video on Obsidian, going from Notion to Obsidian, this is why, because I'm able to write basically all my notes inside of NeoVim and it's super fast. This is really helpful and has some templates. It's pretty basic setup. Basically my Obsidian Vault is just another folder that is on my machine and then I back it up to GitHub, which is really useful. I even have it on my phone to be able to use using SyncThing and this has been awesome. Like I can't recommend the Obsidian and the Obsidian InVim plugin enough. This has been great. I don't think we need to cover the Tmux stuff. This is basically your normal being able to do Control H and Control J to navigate around instead of needing to do the prefix. And then Telescope, this also goes kind of without much introduction. If you're not using Telescope, this is the best way to find files, to be able to find text within your project. And then I have a few different extensions. And so these are all the ones that I have. I have nice, I have this advanced Git search, which is okay. Uh, undo, and so like if I want to undo something, this undo history can help me to change things. So let's see if I wrote this, looked at this part, then you can see I added a couple lines and I could undo that. Um, or revert back to that location. FCF, and then we just talked about NeoClip. Both of those are super useful. And yeah, use Telescope if you're not already. Not much fanfare around this. And check out these extensions if you haven't seen my video on that before. All right, now let's go up to the whole big plugins file and we'll talk about some things. Uh, render Markdown, this is just a nice 
visualization. So if we went up to our markdown up here into the README, oh, there's, yeah, there we go. We can see that it has some nice icons. And then if you have other ones, then you can see that it colors them a little bit differently. This is a new addition I've been playing around with. So it's been nice. If we come down here, if you want to do any NeoVim development, this is a really good one to have. So you have the built-in plugins and libraries. This image in Vim is how I show images within NeoVim. Check out my video on that. I'll link it in the top right. And let's see if we go down a little bit. Oil.invim is one that I use constantly. As you can see, the way that we've been navigating is using oil in Vim. I have a dedicated video on that as well. This has been great. I want to check out mini.files and do a comparison between that and oil in Vim. I personally love oil in Vim, and so I'm curious to see if maybe some of the mini files stuff is pretty good. I've heard it's really good. If you use it, let me know in the comments and I will be sure to check it out and be sure to subscribe because I will likely make a video about that. One of the plugins that I am constantly using kind of as a crutch is Vim float term float. There it is. Uh, Vim float term. This one, if we do FT, this will create a new floating window and it's nice because you can hide it and bring it back. And so you can run a command, get back to where you're editing, and it's super useful. You could also crack open like a terminal if you wanted to and have it in like a, a split or something like that. This one just is nice for me and I'm able to run a lot of the git commands. And so, you know, if I have some git operation, I'm super familiar with the CLI tool and I can run all of that from the command line. Kind of, again, my crutch, because I haven't used other things like Vim Fugitive as much as I should, but that also is a good one for Git. If you want an embedded terminal that just kind of opens up and floats and you can configure it, highly recommend Vim Float Term. Another plugin that I'm constantly using and I really appreciate is NeoTest. So you can add your own language specific NeoTest plugins to this and be able to run tests within whatever the project is. This pretty consistently works out of the box. I haven't had a lot of issues with this. There were, there's a little bit of custom stuff with JavaScript, but everything else is, you know, install it and it works right away. And you get some nice things on the left-hand side with check marks that let you know that your tests are working. You get a nice little panel in the bottom. And so if you crack that open, you can see, you know, on the bottom there, the output panel, I don't have any tests at the moment, but it's super helpful and nice. I would recommend it whenever you're running tests. Another couple plugins that I have loved and really enjoy and have made my workflow easy is this Git signs. And you can see some of that information in the left-hand side. So like whenever I have a change here or a change like that or a delete, then you can see in the left-hand side, it indicates it. Now I have a couple of shortcuts to remove or like revert a specific line. So if we do H, then you can see all the git sign stuff and we can say B for blame line or D to diff this. A lot of times I revert it or reset the hunk in git signs language. So I can do that and quickly revert that. Super useful for going through a file where I'm adding to do's or something else and I need to revert those and clean those up. It kind of works in conjunction with this other plugin called unimpaired, which is a Tim Pope plugin. And so if we do this bracket C or other bracket C, then it will jump to where we we have changes in the file. So if we do this and we go up a little bit and we do a bracket C, it'll jump me back to where I have changes, which is really helpful for, especially whenever you have a large file and you need to make some changes and go back to where you just made changes. The jump lists can get you there, but it's not as consistent. This plugin gets you there right away, which is super helpful. Like I mentioned before, uh, unimpaired, this is super useful. So if we do a bracket, then we have all these different things we can do. F will go to the previous file in the directory. B will jump us to a previous buffer or to the first buffer. So if you want to jump to different files, unimpaired is super useful. All right, the last plugin that I'll talk about is Flash. And this is another folky, awesome plugin. This one, you can jump to different places. So if you hit S, then you can see it gray. This is what I also like about Tokyo Night. So you can do keys and H and it'll jump right to it. There's a bunch of other options. Check out my video about Flash to understand exactly what's going on. I've also done a bunch of videos comparing Flash with other ones. I intend to do one for Pounce in Vim. 
So stay tuned for that. That is upcoming. But Flash so far has been the thing that just works for me. And it works really well with my brain. So if I wanted to jump to dependencies, then it I can just keep typing dependencies until it jumps there, which is really easy on my mind to be able to do. And that kind of at a high level is my NeoVim configuration. If you're interested in any of the other plugins that you saw on the video or in my configuration that you saw outside of this video, let me know in the comments and I will talk more about them. Basically, I wanted to give a overview of some of the key players in my config so that you can install those and make use of them today. As always, thank you for watching. Appreciate everybody watching the videos and reading the articles that I put out. Y'all are awesome. And I hope to make a lot more of these videos soon, and especially one for Ghosty and for that pounce.invim. Those are two I'm really looking forward to. Oh, and mini files. That's also another one. Too many video ideas. That's, that's really my problem right now. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.